on. Guess what? Today I'm going to show you uh, something interesting to do. My daughter wants to have curry later on. So she wants some kind of a curry dish. So I said I was going to make her a nice little flatbread where she can simply uh, pick up uh, her her food with just a little pinch of bread and she could enjoy her meal. Now, uh, I'm going to show you. I have some kabuka that I still have left over and that's a good way for you to take some of your leftovers and turn it into another dish. Now, if you don't have kabuka or any leftover, you can use either a sweet potato, you can use regular potato, but it is so simple to make and I do have another recipe on uh, on YouTube, you could check that out. But I'm just going to show you how easy it is to be able to take some leftover food and make a complete different item out of it. So we're going to start off with uh, cleaning out my kabuka. And that was my vegan mailman. I was so excited. One day I saw uh, a package came to me. And he looked at me and he says, are you vegan? I says, yes. I says, what makes you ask? And he says, because the package, there was like a vegan company that we had ordered from. I says, oh, that's nice. I says, you know about these vegan companies? And he says, well, I'm vegan too. It's two years now. Well, we became best friends. So that's that story. Uh, where is my, and I love that guy. He's sweet uh sometimes he if he sees another package at the post office he comes all the way back just to deliver it to me so here we go you gotta love my vegan my mailman not just because he's vegan but here we go we're gonna just take the inside of our kabuka and the best part is because this was roasted it adds such beautiful flavors to the bread we're gonna make now it's gonna be a flat bread it's not gonna be a rising bread but it is gonna be delicious and I cook a lot of kabuka guys so there's always leftovers and sometimes you know Erica doesn't want to eat kabuka again and I don't blame her always eating the same thing but there's so many things you can do with it and if you have any roasted garlic that's another thing you can throw in Basically, if you're going to cook it, rather, say you don't have any leftovers and you want to cook it, you're going to cook it and you're going to make sure to also mash it. That's important. And it's just going to add so many great flavors to the bread. And it's going to be fun because you could actually, you know how with Indian food, they like to eat with their hands. So she could just grab a little pinch of this bread and she could just put it straight into the bowl, pick up whatever she's eating, and that's that. Okay, so that's pretty much it. The rest is roasted peppers, and I doubt she wants to have that in her bread. I don't see any garlic, so it is what it is. I do have some eggplant that I could scoop up and use, so maybe I will do that. There we go, a little bit of eggplant. Oh, I wish I could eat that. I'm still doing a water fast, guys. And yes, don't call me crazy. It is day 12 for me. Um, I do this often, and I don't do it. Some people say, oh, you do. So, somebody asked if I do it to lose weight. No, I don't do it to lose weight. I do it to detox. I don't know if I've ever mentioned it to you. But I used to suffer with psoriasis for the longest time. Example are my hands. Do you see how my aunt, my hands are? Sorry, I, I, I'm choking on my tongue. This year is all due to the medication that was given to me. It basically burnt my hands like a, a burnt victim. And that's on both sides. I used to have it on both sides of my hands. And I used to have it on my knees. That cleared up after I became vegan. Um... My hands also cleared up after I became vegan. The inside of my hands also cleared up after I became vegan. But around my ankles, I suffer with psoriasis still. And I do whatever I can to try and heal myself. Since I've been on a water fast, it is completely, completely gone. My feet look like 
baby skin. It's so beautiful and so clean. There's just a little bit of like a staining, almost like where the scars were, but no scars whatsoever, no sores, nothing. So this is why I do water fast because I know that our body is capable of healing itself. It might take a little longer than conventional medicine, but I find that conventional medicine just masks the problem. It doesn't really remove the problem. So I always do uh, either a juice fast or a water fast. And this time I'm doing a water fast. I'm not going to go crazy and do like 30, 40 days of water fast. No, I'm not going to do it. Uh, but I will start eating again probably tomorrow or the day after. And I will start very slowly. Uh, I won't be eating anything that's like this. It's probably going to be, you know, very simple raw dishes and let my body get used to eating again. So that's what I'm going to be doing. But I wish I could taste this because the smell is like driving me up the wall. Every time I cook something for my family, I want to just like throw myself out the window. But that is, what can you do? That is what it is. For now, I got to do what I got to do to heal my body, right? Like I said, maybe some of you don't believe in it, but I sure do. For example, I know that when we became vegan, uh, we all came off medication. Uh, I used to be on medication for my stomach. My husband was diabetic, high cholesterol, blood pressure. Uh, he was like a wreck. Um, but my brother-in-law, heart problems, uh, asthma since he was a little boy, my sister with also allergies. I used to have allergies uh, when we became vegan. No more medication. We don't take anything. We don't even take a Tylenol if we really have to. Oh, well, maybe if we really have to, we will. But we try not to. But Yes, going vegan did change my family and a lot of people that I know. I know someone, uh, by the way, if you're watching Pina, uh, this girl, well, this girl, she's not a girl, she's a woman. Uh, she was sick with kidney disease since she was a little girl. When she became vegan, the doctors were in shock. This woman was on medication as a child. And after she became vegan, um, her doctors want to do case studies on her and find out what did she do to help and get rid of her kidney disease. Yes, she had kidney disease that they told her was incurable. So when I say that I know a lot of people that heal on a vegan diet, I'm telling you personally and people that I know have healed a lot of problems on a vegan diet. So if you can do it, do it. It's the best thing that you can do for yourself, your body, the soul, the animals, the, your future kids, your grandkids, the planet. Trust me, going vegan is the right thing to do. Anyhow, back to my beautiful dish. So I have leftover kabuka squash and I have a little bit of eggplant that I'm going to kind of mash up really as much as I can. And I'm going to use this. And um, if you don't have, if you want to make this dish and you want to... Uh, and you don't have any leftovers like I have right here. And you see all of those flavors? Those were from the cast iron pan. So those are like maples and spices. It's really going to add a nice, nice taste to the bread. So like I was saying, if you don't have any, um, any ready for you, then go ahead, either cook a sweet potato or a regular potato. Or you can use um, cooked lentils if you have. There's so many ways you can make this bread. And this is a very, very old bread. This bread's been around a long time ago. You know, not everybody had the, uh, you know, the ovens and the stoves. A lot of them had to cook on fire. And this was just a great way for them to make a dough, smack it against a rock. And then you had yourself some bread that you can pick up some food with. So, here we go. Now, basically, the recipe, um, I would say, will be half and half. If you add more flour, then you're going to have to use some kind of a liquid. Uh, but otherwise, if you're just using, if you have the right amount of um, squash or potato, uh, if you have one cup of it, then use one cup of flour. I eyeball everything, but I'm just telling you, it's really half and half. Uh, it's very simple. Now, to this, I will add a little bit of salt. 
I'm not going to go crazy with spices because, uh, you know, it's going to be in the dish itself. You want a pretty plain bread because the flavors are all going to be in the dish. But very simple to do. So I'm going to eyeball this. And I would say this would be almost a cup of kabuka. And I am going to add about a cup of flour. If I need to add more, I will. So I am going to slowly just mix this. And then I will use my hands. I will wash them and come back and use my hands to do the rest. I'm not going to make a lot of this because I still have some cornbread for my husband and Erica's craving curries. Now, like I said, if we have too much flour, not enough squash, just simply add a little bit of water. But you're going to add the water slowly. You're not going to go crazy and add the water all at once because then... You're going to have to add more flour and it's going to be a vicious circle. We're going to just keep growing in the amount of dough that you need. Let me go wash my hands. I'll be right back. All right. Now, I'm going to probably add... I should have done that before I touched my hands, eh? Yes. Okay, let me just, I'm going to move you guys, so don't freak okay, out. Okay, so I am just going to push this aside. I should have done this before I dirty my hands, right? And I'm going to use just a little bit of magic, and that is baking powder. Just a little bit. You don't have to. Sometimes I add it, sometimes I don't. But I will add it this time. Okay. Okay. I'm going to use my knuckles so I don't get everything under my nails. My hands are washed, guys. And we're going to make our dough. At this point, you could dump it on your counter. My counter is clean because I just made a beautiful sauce. Nice marinara that... I'm going to make pasta for my mother-in-law who is old and really, you know, depends on us. So my sister-in-law and I do a turn each and we cook for her. Well, we both cook for her. So I made a nice sauce. I'm going to make her sauce. I'm going to make her a beautiful dish of Swiss chard and potatoes. She loves that. I have some uh, beautiful... Um, mushrooms that I have in the freezer that I picked this fall. I have some beautiful chanterelles. I'm going to fry some of those up for her. And that's what I'm going to make. And this is going to be for my daughter because she wants a curry dish. Now, I don't know if she wants chickpeas or if she wants a tofu curry. We'll find out. Let me just wash my hands one more time, guys. Okay. So... Let me just put a little bit of flour down. We're going to drop our dough. And we're going to gently knead this. You don't want to over knead it because then it's going to, you know, be a mess. But we will be incorporating just a little more flour. So yeah, I was so excited. I was so excited when he told me he was vegan because you don't usually find a lot of vegans where I live. Not around my area, anyhow. See how simple this was? It really did not take long. And this is something you could use, um, like I said, you could use potatoes, sweet potatoes. If you have mashed lentils, you can use that. I've used cauliflower with it.
Now, how do we cook this? Well, if you're lucky, you have one of those beautiful ovens where you can smack this against the stone of the... But since I don't have a fireplace or anything like that, I am stuck making this, which is the next, next best, best, the next best thing, which is a cast iron pan. Or if you have a pizza rock, uh, you could also use that if you want. Now, the size really depends on you. How big you want this to be is up to you. If you want little mini ones, we're going to cut this again in half. I'm just going to turn it into a ball first. You could cut this again in half. Or if you want... Uh, larger ones you want to then maybe leave them the size that I had before so out of this you're going to be able to get eight beautiful pieces of bread so I'm going to show you how simple it is to stretch it out always make sure you have flour guys because this is almost like a, a dumpling at this point this is almost like a gnocchi you could turn that into a gnocchi that's how simple food is. Okay, I just want to get my cast iron going. Now, another thing is when you make this bread, you want something to cover it so that they stay, uh, they stay moist and pliable. So when she's ready to eat, they're going to be uh, nice and pliable for her. Otherwise, they will dry up, which is not the end of the world. I don't care. When I used to eat them, I used to eat them anyway. I had them leftovers day after, two days after, three days after. It didn't bother me. But when you're making a nice dish and you're presenting it to someone, or if you're making it as a meal, do cover them with a nice towel, and it just keeps them more pliable and softer. So when she's ready to eat, she just rips it open, and she... Mm. Yum, yum, yum. That's all I'm going to tell you is yum, yum, yum. Okay. I've got my cast iron that I am going to oil up and put this to heat so when I'm ready, it's ready for me. Now, if you want, you could also use a grill to do this. Um, let me just put this on low. Uh, you can use a grill if you have a pizza stone. The only thing is you're going to have to go into the oven, lay them on top of the pizza stone, and then make sure you check them and flip them over. So you can use and even a pan. If you don't have a cast iron, you can use a pan. So don't worry about it. Okay, so we make a little circle and make sure to flour this. So keep flour on hand. Now, rolling pin. Just keep sure, make sure that there's flour. That is a trick. So make sure there's lots of flour under there. And just keep flipping it over. And that's how simple these are. And what's fun about these, you can also turn them into a sandwich if you want. You can put some roasted veggies in it, fold it in half, make them small, and you can just... Uh, if you make them small, you can put one on top of the other. But now, how thick you want it is really up to you. But there you go. Aren't they beautiful? So we're going to put that aside and we're going to do another one. And if they're not perfect, that's even okay because it makes it a little more rustic. Just make sure you have lots of flour on your board. Oh my god, I wish you could smell this. My kabuka squash had uh, steak spice, it had maple, it had olive oil. If I had my roasted garlic, my husband ate those, uh, I would have probably squashed some of that too in there. Now if you want more of an authentic like Indian dish, what you could also do is get what they call black seeds. Um, you can put that in your dough when you're when you're mixing it, and that'll give a nice flavor to your 
to your dish, to your bread, sorry, not your dish. You still have to make the dish. I won't make the dish for a video today, but like I said, uh, you can use these any way you want. There we go. We're going to start putting this heat up so we can actually start cooking some of these. I just want to get a towel ready. This towel has been around since my mother, and my mother's been gone almost 35 years ago. Um, we use this, it's just for either pastas to lay pasta on top, or if we're making a bread to cover the bread. So this is just a food towel. It's not the prettiest right now. There's some stains on it. Those stains don't come off. Uh, but you know what? It means a lot to me because I know my mom used to use it. I'm using it now. And maybe if I could still keep it in good shape, Erica can use it or Amanda. Just a plate and we lay down part of the towel and then we're just going to cover them and keep them nice and soft. And what's good about making bread this way because you could actually make the same recipe with just flour and water. So what's good about this is that you're not taking in all the flour you normally would because you have basically half-half recipe. And don't worry about the shapes because when they're rustic, they're even prettier. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna throw in my first one. Note to self, don't wear black when you're using flour. <laughs> They really don't take long once you put them on that cast iron. And because this is kabuka, it's going to have a really nice sweet taste, the bread. Sorry for the fan noise. I need to get a new fan. This one here sounds like it's an industrial fan for Pete's sake. It's so busted up. But you know, I gotta wait. I gotta wait. When you can't afford it, you just don't do it, right? what they look like so far and again I apologize for the noise I have to get a new fan right now it's not on my bucket list <laughs> when I could afford it I'll get it but for now this is it I'm gonna show you what they look like I've got one more in my cast iron pan here they are aren't they beautiful one more to to add to the stack and there they are beautiful pliable uh, now if you're eating Indian food you can just break a piece and with the bread just grab your food you can eat it that way you can dunk if you want you can clean up the sauce if you want you can do anything you want with this beautiful beautiful bread the trick is like I said to keep it pliable right now you want to be able to 
uh, keep it covered. So I have this that I use. Maybe you can invest one that you only use for food and not dishes and then food. And I'm going to just finish this last one. But very, very simple. And this is done with leftover kabuka. Imagine that. You don't even have to, well, what am I going to do with this? Nobody's eating it. Well, if you're not eating it one way, you're going to eat it another way. That's what I say. <laughs> That's how it works in my house. <laughs> If you're not eating my leftovers one way, you're going to find it in another dish. Here we go. And again, I have to apologize for the noise, but this is it. And my daughter's making her own dish, so I have no idea how she's going to make it. She wants to get creative herself tonight, but I will take a picture with the bread and the dish that she makes. So again, I'm going to say thank you very much for coming to visit me on my channel, coming to my very noisy house. Let me just... Oh, do you hear the sound? I'm telling you, it's like an industrial fan. So I gotta apologize with the barking dog. That's my JJ up there tormenting the squirrel. So I gotta get him in. But here's my beautiful, beautiful bread. And this is done with leftovers. Remember, if you don't have the leftovers, just cook up a potato. And it's usually half, half. So if it's one cup of potato, one cup of flour, a little bit of salt, baking soda, only if you want. I've done it even without. So don't worry about it if you don't want to add it. Um... If you have a cast iron pan, that's the easiest way and the nicest way to get these uh, beautiful flat breads. If not, you can use a pizza stone or just use any pan you have. So there you go. I hope you like this recipe. And again, thank you. I love you all. And guess what? So I want to say thank you. I'm sorry my dog is really like driving me crazy today. So thank you. And I guess what, guys? I'll see you in my next video. For more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to Connie's Rawsome Kitchen, give it a thumbs up, and share it with your friends.